Hello, have you ever wanted to play XCOM, but you, there's too many buttons to figure out and you're too stupid to read the manual? Well, I've got fantastic news. I'm going to explain everything so that you can get into playing XCOM, which is one of the best games of all time. So let's hit new game and let's play on experienced. And now we're going to learn what all the buttons do. Then later we will learn some very basic tactics. And then later we will learn what you need to know to play this on a modern system. So all the buttons down here in the bottom right, we can rotate our world around and zoom in and out. This is nice if you want to know where countries are. I believe some of these countries are incorrect because this game was made in 1927 and back then the borders were different. Anyways, when you first start a game, you'll have to select site for a new base. So just click somewhere and you get to name it whatever you want. I usually name things after the country I make them in. Other options are naming them after fruits or vegetables. Please don't name them after animals. That's a bug. It will crash the game. Over here we see a shit ton of buttons, but it's okay. You don't have to worry about what any of these do because I'm going to explain it. First of all, these 5 second, 1 minute, 5 minute, 30 minute, 1 hour, 1 day, these control how fast time is going. Um, I'm not sure what the measurement is. 5 seconds per second, maybe? Um, well, I'd time this, but I'd waste your time. You click this, and oh shit, time's going faster, so that's pretty fantastic. If you go up here and click on the intercept button, this will bring up all the little airplanes that you have sitting in your base. We'll cover these later. But for now, let's go to our base. So you can click the bases button, and it brings you right here. So here's our base. Yours will look slightly different because in part three, I'll explain how to get it to look like this. But here's our base. Oh shit, it's a shit ton of buttons. What are we going to do? Well, we're going to learn. Build new base is pretty self-explanatory. You can build a new base wherever you want that we don't need. Let's go back to bases. Base information. This is good to check every once in a while. It gives you an overview of what's going on. This is all pretty self-explanatory. Personnel available, personnel total. Zero soldiers available, eight total, 20 engineers, 20, 20, 50, 50, living quarters, stores, laboratories, workshops, hangars. We'll talk about all this later. Um, don't need to worry about that. You can also click on monthly costs. This is helpful to get a rundown of what's going on in your base, but most of this information you don't need. You can always dig down later to find it out, but uh, for right now we just need very simple. What do all these buttons do? You can worry about this shit later after you've played like eight games of XCOM. The soldiers is pretty self-explanatory. Here are all your soldiers. You see their name, their rank, and where they are. What ship they're assigned to. They're all assigned to Sky Ranger 1. If you want, you can click on people and learn all about them. This guy's name is Carl Crossett, and here are a bunch of stats you can peruse at your leisure. These are all fairly self-explanatory, and the ones that aren't we will learn about later, if ever. Um, one fun thing is that you can click on somebody and rename them, so if Olga Romanov is a stupid name, you can always just rename her to Olga Roman. Isn't that wonderful? So those are your soldiers. Over here is Equip Craft. This is where you take stuff out of airplanes and add things to airplanes. Your interceptor is your sort of jet airplane to shoot down UFOs. Over here you click on this to swap out the left weapon. These are different weapons, we'll learn about these later. Over here you swap in the right weapon. Let's actually give these stingrays. Um, there we go. But I don't have any ammo for those, so that's not going to work very well. But that's alright. Uh, more important is your Sky Ranger. This carries your people around. Um, it has crew, equipment, and armor buttons. Armor doesn't do anything because we don't have any armor yet. But if you go to crew, you can assign people to the Sky Ranger or not by clicking over here. And you can change the order um, that they will show up in the Sky Ranger, which is important if you want to put some people at the front to ensure that they die even sooner. That's only if you're pissed off. Equipment, pretty self-explanatory. Here's all your shit. Over here is the stuff in your base. Over here is the stuff in the Sky Ranger. So if I don't think we need to bring a heavy cannon, I can just take all that stuff off. But I want to bring the rocket launcher, so I'll bring that and all the rockets. Let's bring more grenades. Let's bring some smoke grenades. Let's bring more rifles and more rifle clips. Your Sky Ranger has limited space, as does your base. So let's go to build facilities. That's pretty self-explanatory. You click on one of these to build it and then let's say living quarters and then you build it somewhere. Let's build some living quarters here. Let's also build a general stores and an alien containment. Later on we'll learn what you should be building but now we just learn how to build. That was pretty simple. Research. Well, here we go. Let's click new project. Let's pick something like laser weapons. Start project. Increase the number of scientists working on it. Hit OK. Hit OK. So now we have one project going. It shows you what you're researching how many people researching it, and the progress, which we don't know. 
manufacture is works just the same as research. New production, you click on something and you build it. I can't build anything yet because I haven't researched anything yet. Finally, transfer. If you want to move something to another base, you click on the base. It'll show up here and you just select what you want to transfer. Uh, shipping costs are pretty high because USPS does not like shipping aliens. Purchase recruits is what it sounds like. You can purchase things and recruit things. For example, if I want to load my Stingray launchers up with missiles, I buy 20 Stingray missiles. It's going to be $60,000, but that's okay. It's not my money. This is just spending tax money. And I'm a liberal, so I love doing that. Sell slash sack is pretty self-explanatory too. We can sell some shit. We can sack some people. Um, don't sack anybody because unemployment's bad. You won't get voted into being president of the next election. All right, and back to Geoscape, which is the globe. That's great. Um, here's a button for graphs. You don't really need to worry about these. Um, but if you ever want to learn anything, you can go to the graph. So over here on the left, you click on things, and these will turn them on on the graph. And then up at the top, you select which graph you want. So right now, we have UFO activity in areas. That's this button. We click on here, UFO activities in countries. And it'll be this button. Um, but you only have to turn these on once. Then you go XCOM activity in areas, XCOM activity in countries, income, finance. Whoops. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's important. The way to get out of the graphs screen is to click this world button. It took me like 20 minutes the first time I, hit, I was here. I was like, how the fuck do I get out of this screen? I was clicking all these buttons. Anyways, the income is actually a nice one. Uh, turn off the total, because that's not very helpful, but it shows you which countries are giving you the most money. So right now, USA is certainly in the lead for money. And what's next? France? France is paying me some good, good stuff. Later, we'll learn where you get money, but right now we're just learning buttons. Always with the buttons. UFOpedia is basically what it sounds like. It's like Wikipedia, but you can't get to Jesus in five clicks. That's a fun game you can play, Jesus in five clicks. You go to Wikipedia and try and get from anything to Jesus in five clicks. So, um, this has info on basically everything you could ever want. Right now it only has info about, like, XCOM stuff. You are XCOM. And so I can read about the Sky Ranger or the Interceptor. Here's the Stingray missile. Here's the Avalanche missile. You can compare these. Which one's better? Which one's worse? Avalanche is actually better. I always forget the names. Um, so that's good. And later when you research aliens, you can read about that stuff. So that's great. Um, it's like a built-in I'm an idiot button, because if you're watching this video, you're probably an idiot because you don't know anything about XCOM, but it's okay. You can be an idiot. Oh, look, research is done. View reports. We can now research laser pistol. Allocate research. Laser pistol. Yeah, that's great. Um, so now that's researching. The second to... Oh, Okay, my Stingray missiles arrived. That's great. Okay, five seconds just is the same as hitting okay, except it sets the timer down to five seconds. So if you want, um, you can go back to your base without much time passing. Now let's go to the options button. Fairly self-explanatory. You can save the game, and here's some games I've saved. Um, I would not save the game all the time because that's no fun. Finally, you can click the funding button. Where's your money coming from? Um, USA. South Africa is giving me a lot, too. I'm not sure where they got that money. Probably from exploiting diamonds. That's great. Um, and that's it for the buttons on the Geoscape. So now let's wait. Um, research completed. Blah, blah. Okay. Blah, it, I don't... But, um, here we go. It's UFO. Center on UFO equals five seconds. That'll bring the time down. So when you see a UFO, you can either click on it and get some information, or you can click on your base, or you can click the intercept button. Either way... You'll want to shoot it down with an interceptor. I got lucky though, and it's landed, so we're going to send a Sky Ranger directly to it. It'll take off, and it will fly. I'm zooming with my mouse button. We'll learn how to do that later when I make this game run better on new system. But for now, we're just waiting. Looks like it's on the border between Germany and France. Aliens trying to start some shit, man. They're trying to start World War III. It's not going to work though. XCOM is on the case. We're just north of Budapest. Ready to go. All right, we're ready to land. Begin mission. Fuck yes. Now we're going to learn a lot more buttons. All right, so now it's time to learn some buttons. Um, when the battle starts, you'll get to outload your people. Um, the only thing I'm going to do is take a pistol from Virgil and the pistol ammo, and I'm going to give him a rocket launcher and some rockets. Don't put things in both hands because that will reduce accuracy quite a bit, and this person should bring... A rifle, because that's better. Okay, and then you hit OK, and you're ready to go. Now it's your turn. Press button to continue. That button is any button, I think. I've only ever used the mouse button. Let's try something else. Right arrow. Nope, that doesn't work. L, that doesn't work. Nope, just the mouse button. Okay, so here we go. We are on 
the uh, map screen, you'll be presented with a view of your soldiers sitting in the Sky Ranger. And to move them, you click on one of them, and then you click on where you want them to move, and then move out. To change their direction uh, facing, you right-click, and they will look out in whatever direction you're right-clicking. So, look at all these buttons. Oh my god, what are we going to do? Well, it's pretty simple. This button and this button, man up, man down, will move your people up and down. Uh, this only works if they can fly, and obviously my people can't fly, so that's not going to be much help. Uh, ladder up, ladder down, moves your view. Um, right now we're two squares up, you can see my little cursor, one square above the other. If we go down, we're one square up. If we go up twice, we're three squares up, so the whole game sort of works on 2D levels. So that's great. This thing that looks like... Um, is the map. You want to find the edges of the map, so here's an edge and here's an edge. That's useful because obviously no aliens will come uh, from the edges. And in fact you can go up or down a level on the map too, but that's rarely helpful. Um, this button is toggle stand or crouch. If you're crouching you'll get increased accuracy and you'll be harder to hit, I believe, but um, you can't move. You have to, when you move you'll automatically stand up. And of course it takes time units to crouch. Um, time units are just spent whenever you do anything, including turn or move. This button, um, what does this do? Oh yeah, this opens up the info for the person. So this is Olga Roman, and you can look at her inventory and what's on the ground right under her. This button centers your view on the person. This goes to the next XCOM person, so you just keep clicking this to cycle. This one does the same thing, except it will cross this person out from the list so that next time you cycle, it will ignore them. So I'll click this, for example, and then when I cycle through, it's just going to skip this person always until my next turn. This toggles um, whether you're seeing the higher level or the lower level. You basically never need this on unless you want to land on a roof or something. This is your options screen. Don't really have to worry about much of this. You can speed things up if things are going too slow. There's also the save game button, but don't get in the habit of saving your game during the fights, because then you're just going to do that for everything, and that makes it less fun. This is the end turn button. We don't want to click that. And this is the lift off button. That's very helpful if you're getting your ass kicked and you have to get out of here. So, um, oh, four more buttons. This button is just what's selected by default, and these three buttons reserve time units. So, for example, if I click this button, and then I move my person around. I'm spending time units, this green thing, in order to do anything. But um, if you want to shoot something, you can click on your gun and choose one of the options. You'll have these three, or these four. And you see this costs 19 time units to do an auto shot. Um, which means if I click this button, which is the auto shot reserve time units thing, she's never going to um, walk anywhere that takes more than 19 time units. So in fact, if I try this, it says time units reserved for auto shot, and she still has 19, so if I want to do anything else with her, I'll have to click this, and then it'll let me do stuff and spend the rest of her time units. But it's good to reserve time units for at least an auto shot. Um, the difference between these three things is fairly self-explanatory. An aimed shot aims, it costs a lot of time units, but it's more accurate. A snapshot just shoots, and then an auto shot fires three times. This is typically the best deal, because I have a 21% chance to hit for 19 time units. You multiply that by three, that's 21 times 21 times 21 to hit all three. Well, you do the sound. Um, whatever. And those are all the buttons, I think. If you want to throw a grenade or something, you just bring the grenade into your hand, um, and then you'll click on the grenade, and you'll prime it, and then you'll throw it, and you should be good to go. So, um, fighting these aliens is actually, I think, going to be a topic for the next video where we learn about basics. So, I will end it here.